uh, CBS, all kinds of places, uh, and I'm an editorial cartoonist. So hope you guys are well, and um, I'm here in my studio, and I'm going to be live drawing for you. Today's topic is something, uh, usually I'll pick something that's in the news. If it's breaking news, I'll try to draw something about that either a cartoon idea, a political cartoon, uh, maybe a slice of life cartoon. I do all those things. But uh, today, actually, I thought I would try to draw something about uh, what's on a lot of people's minds is who's who's uh, who is Biden going to pick for his running mate? Um, it's constantly being discussed. He keeps postponing the deadline. He keeps setting a deadline and saying and then he doesn't he doesn't announce it. So it's kind of interesting. Why is he doing that? Uh, let's see who's here. Hello from New Orleans. Hello. Hi, hi, LA. Mark in LA. Hi, Pablo. Um, Scottsdale, another LA. Um, yeah, so uh, this is an interesting topic for me because it, uh, I, I don't know why. I'm always fascinated as to how people choose their running mate. And we've seen some wacky ones in recent years. Remember um, uh, Sarah Palin? Um, uh, oh, what's his name? Oh, gosh, I forgot his name. But anyway, there's some really strange picks. Um, and um, I'm going to turn you around and start drawing, and I'll talk as I'm drawing. So I did, I did do a little research. Let me turn you around. I did do some research so you can see my sketches ahead of time um, of, as to who the media is is saying he, he is considering. Uh, and um, these are names that have been floated for months, months and months and months. And what's also interesting about this and why I, I'm fascinated with this topic also is, is because, uh, I'm going to test this pen first. This is a little pen. I might want to use a bigger pen. Um, see, I have a whole bunch of pens to choose from. Hmm, let's look at this one. Yeah, that's that's a nice one. Don't really ask me why, I just think it, I like it better. What's that? Something's on there. <laughs> I got some black on here already. Good start. Hi, Adam. Hi, Eduardo. Hi, Peter. Um, yeah. So I, uh, the interesting thing about this, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wing it. You, you, this is just for fun, okay? I'm not gonna publish this except on, on Haps, which is great. So this is the first person, Karen Bass who um, I've, I've seen her name before. And I think I saw her on, on something. She was uh, in Congress. She's a Congress person. And um, she's the chair of the Democratic Black Caucus. And um, Biden is, her name, She's been. he's been meeting with, She's been meeting with Biden in, in the last couple of weeks. So uh, she's possibly being considered. The thing about Bass I read today is that uh, she's a little left leaning, which is great, uh, and possibly a good thing for Biden to do because um, he's moderate. Actually, I don't know how tall these women are, so I'm just going to, you're just going to have to. Um, Oops. <laughs> Just going to have to sort of assume they're all the same height, roughly. Um, but she, she might be a little too liberal. She, uh, she might be an easy target for um, Trump because she said something slightly positive about the Castro regime, Fidel Castro in Cuba. And uh, so we know that uh, this is Bass, Karen Bass. Can you see? Just make sure, I'm gonna just keep checking in your comments and see if everything's okay. Good. Um, 
And then there's, um, so as she says, something, she said something, let's see, she, not pro Castro, but it was, I don't, you have to look it up in the seventies. Um, I read it th this afternoon, but I don't quite remember the details. She, she was uh, something with, um, um, education and, you know, a lot of people have said that Castro, that's one thing that Castro was good at was, was education. And this is Val Demings, who if you watched any of the impeachment hearings, you will have seen her. She is from Florida and she's a, um, uh, is, I forget what her position is. Sorry, I've just drawn a blank. Um, she's a former police chief. Let me look it up. She is um, former police chief. Is she a she's a representative? Yeah, of course. Yeah, she was in the impeachment hearings. That's what. Of course, I knew that. Of course, <laughs> I have I have trouble sometimes drawing and thinking at the same time. And so using my visual, my visual. Um, her hair's a little higher up than that. My visual uh, thinking right now. Um, she might have trouble uh, as his pick because of her background in, as a police chief. I don't know what her background is. I don't know if it's something that Trump and Republicans can go after. But um, I drew her a lot. I drew the I drew the impeachment hearing, so I drew Val Demings a lot. Um, then there is. Somebody that I drew an awful lot because I drew a lot of the um, uh, debates is uh, Elizabeth Warren. And I, I know I, since I've drawn her on stage a lot, I know uh, she seems to be a small person and she's very thin. I don't know about this other one because I haven't really seen their full body posture. But Elizabeth Warren is pretty thin. Okay, so this is uh, Demings, right? Yes. Warren. Warren's being considered. She might be a problem for him because she is, she is left, and um, but she's she's been around, so she's been through the mill with uh, Trump. She knows how to go after him. But uh, I, I, you know, we as we know, Biden has says he's going to pick a woman, and um, uh. He may he may pick a black woman, and most of these most of these final uh, candidates are black women. And um, this is not a very good rendition. I didn't do a good job here. This is um, Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Not a good, not a good one of her, but I drew her a lot also during the, um, during the debates. Uh, and she might have problems because uh, of her record as a prosecutor. You know, as a prosecutor, you have to make a lot of tough decisions sometimes. And um, there may be stuff in there that the Republicans can use against her. Choices that she had to make. Harris. What I find interesting about this also, let me finish drawing and then I'll, then I'll um, start painting and you can, we can talk about some other things that have to do with this. Uh, and finally, who I have drawn very little, maybe once or twice, so I may not get her very right, is um, Susan Rice. A lot of these women have great eyebrows. They're like, <clears throat> well, Kamala has puts often puts her hair 
to one side. Yeah, it didn't do that right. And Susan Rice, of course, was Obama's national security advisor, a really competent person. And, um, but she is tied to Benghazi, and I can't remember exactly why, but uh, we know that Uh, anything to do with Benghazi, Trump will just be really happy to bring that back up because he thinks it'll uh, serve him well with his base. He thinks that Benghazi was all Hillary's fault. Um, so, this is race. Okay. These are the people that have floated to the top in, in the last few weeks. It could be somebody completely different. We never we never really know until you know, this decision. And um, what was funny is that, it's not funny, but it's something that we need to talk about is that um, these women are already being um, subjected to some sexist remarks uh, and sexist articles. There was an article in the LA Times that, that made reference to how uh, this is like The Bachelor, who's gonna, who's going, who is Biden gonna give the rose to? And um, come on, that we don't need to do that. Uh, these are extremely competent people. They just happen to be women. It's important that Biden is choosing a woman. I think it's great. And I I was just beginning my career when Geraldine Ferraro was selected by Fritz Mondale to be his running mate. Uh, and I remember the sexist remarks, although I, I don't remember any examples to, to share with you, but it was quite something. That was back in the day, 84, 1984, which is not that long ago, but it seemed like our country was so naive about, oops, it's bleeding, sexism in the media, even though this was in the height of the second wave of feminism. Um, Geraldine Ferraro got made fun of for her clothes, her hair. And then, <clears throat> of course, uh, when Hillary ran for president, we had more of the same, much more. It was quite something, and it was interesting. And the second time Hillary ran, oh, the first time Hillary ran was with um, uh, Sarah Palin. So it was kind of interesting to see how the um, media treated Sarah Palin as well. Not a liberal conservative. All right, I want to show you what I'm doing. I'm making, since um, I have brown for these women, I'd have to make a white skin tone for those with horn. And that involves, it doesn't come in a tube, involves using um, red and blue and yellow. And I realize that these these women, these three black women, are more light skinned than than Karen Bass. So I have to adjust that a little bit too. Anyway, so the the LA Times had that really weird article, and then um, there was also an article about how uh, in the New York Times recently. Ed Rendell, who was a, I believe, a senator for Pennsylvania and a big Hillary Clinton supporter. He's a Democrat. He made a comment about Susan Rice, how uh, she's smiling more on TV. She's not as easy a, a smiler as maybe, I guess, I don't remember the exact quote, but you can look it up. But the fact that he referenced whether she was smiling or not, you know, is, is problematic. Let me see what you guys are saying. These are the kind of, some of them are subtle, some of them are not so subtle. 
sexist comments can come in all shapes and sizes. Let me see what your comments are. I'm looking at the computer. Somebody says, Mark says it's so hard to believe we've never had a woman president or vice president. I know. Like so many of the other developed countries have had women in either spot. Somebody says, Mark, says it's so hard to believe. You. That. Looking for your comments. Hmm. Okay, not seeing them. Anyway, maybe there aren't that many. Rendell was governor. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, that's right. I knew that. They treated her surprisingly well until Cork interviewed destroyed her. Oh, right, Sarah Palin. Yeah, that was quite, quite an interview. Um, Ariana says, I like that your art makes them look professional and powerful. I love the feminism. Well, you know what I've discovered? I sort of glanced at their at images on Google of them. And, uh, you know, I, as a feminist, I believe women can wear whatever they want. And obviously that's what it's all about. But I noticed that most of these women wear pants. And uh, that's, it's, it's just interesting. It's a time I've, you know, I've been around. So I've seen different iterations of women in politics. And uh, for so many years, they, they always wore skirts or dresses. And it's almost like they were not allowed to. I think there was a rule, wasn't there? Somebody correct me. There was a rule in 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 Congress that women had to wear dresses. Is that somebody? Somebody let me know um, if that's true or not. I think that is true. And just recently it was changed. Um, not that anybody followed it anymore. But um, shall I put some color on their clothes? What time is it? Sure, why not? So I don't know. I don't know what color clothes they wear. These women obviously have their, their choices. I know Elizabeth Warren, I remember watching her. Uh, she wore usually a colorful jacket and black pants. So I'll do her jacket first. And then I remember that Kamala Harris wore black a lot, which is what I would do. I'd wear nothing but black if I were running for office. <clears throat> I wear black anyway, <laughs> whether I'm running for office or not. Um, now, at some point, I don't know when he's going to announce. And I thought today, if he was going to announce today while I was right before my broadcast, I would have had to shift gears and draw that person, maybe put them in a cartoon. But I will be doing actual cartoons. This is just a drawing. Um, cartoons with an idea. But whoever he chooses, you can believe that the, the GOP is going to come after her. Nobody's business. It was amazing with Hillary when she ran for president, what, what the media and what other politicians did. The media was also very tough on her. Clothing, her pantsuits, who cares? Just let her talk. Um, So I don't know who's, I, I have a feeling he might go with, if I had to narrow this down further, this field, I would say Kamala or Rice. I like, I like them all, but I like, I do like Val Demings. She was quite something. I loved listening to her speak at the impeachment hearings. Um, and I did like, oh, also being considered as the, uh, is, um, Keisha Bottoms, the mayor of Atlanta. But I didn't put her on here because I, my feeling is that she probably won't be picked because 
she doesn't have quite enough experience yet on the national stage. And um, somebody else that was brought up recently was Gretchen Whitmer that was brought up today. She's the governor of Michigan, am I correct? And um, some one article I read today said that, yes, she's been meeting with Biden, but it may be because Biden's asking for her opinion, not that she's a selection. I think Biden will probably go for a black woman. Let's give them some shoes. Sensible shoes. You have to be a politician. You ought to be comfortable, I would think. So much else to do. All right. Susan Rice's hair is darker than that. I don't know. Let me give her some darker hair. I think it's even darker than that. But I can't go in and change it at the moment. I don't think. Maybe I can add some black to it. She's got very dark hair. So... They are the contenders. I mean, that we know of. We don't know. We really don't know. What else did I have to say? Um, I think I said everything I was thinking of saying. It's, it'll be very interesting. Let's see what you guys are talking about. Thank you, Elias. It's great drawing. Um, they uh, let's see. I read that. Thank you, Frank Trotter. Um, I'm, I'm reading your comments. Um, there's a Bernie supporter. Uh, looks like a debate stage. Well, yeah, it does, doesn't it? I do a lot of debate stages. I don't think we're going to have a debate stage. Um, Somebody says, I liked Warren until she backed out of Medicare for all. Where's Stacy? I didn't draw Stacy in this picture because I don't think she's in contention anymore. Um, and I, I don't know why. I'm not, I'm not a close friend of Biden's. Uh, I just think from what I've been reading that she's not in consideration much. Um, she's, she's very strong. I mean, she'd be great. So many of these people. You have to consider um, that Biden's up in years, and he might not—he might have a physical problem, and whoever is going to take over has to be ready to do it. So, anyway, that's what I have for you today, and I—I'll um, be back here tomorrow, around the same time. I'm not sure, but uh, sometime in the afternoon, most likely, and um, draw about something else in the news or, or something in life that's going on. Maybe even a, a, a humorous cartoon about just cooking or something. We'll see. So good to see you guys. And I hope all is well. And please stay safe and please wear your masks.